In this video, we're going to look at how the value of the second derivative can tell you about the concavity of the original function. In the last video, we looked at how the value of the first derivative can tell you whether a function is incre increasing or decreasing, and then we looked at critical points and how those are zeros of the first derivative and how they might reveal to us potential uh, local maximum endpoints. So this video, we're focusing on second derivative and how it tells us whether a function is concave up or concave down, and how the zeros of it could also potentially tell us about possible points of inflection. So here we go. Um, a function is what we call concave up over an interval if the second derivative is positive for all the x values in that interval. So this means f double prime of x, that means the second derivative, greater than zero, means positive. So let's look at this function I have here in Desmo. So this function, I would say it's concave up between an x value of zero and infinity. So everything greater than zero, the function is concave up. Why do I say it's concave up? I say it's concave up because if you look at these tangent lines that I have Desmos graphing for me, the slopes of the tangent lines, as I move from left to right, the slopes of them are increasing, which means the second derivative is positive, which means the original function is concave up over that interval. So notice the slope of the tangent right here, I've got Desmos telling me the slope of the tangent is negative four, right? The first derivative tells me the slope of the tangent. So the slope of the tangent here is negative four. As I move to the right, pay attention to this value right here, negative four. Notice it's going to be going up. Right here, the tangent slope is, let's see if I can get it at the point where it's zero. Not exactly, but notice it was at negative four here, went to zero, and it's going to continue going up. Those tangent slopes are increasing. So the second derivative tells us how the tangent slopes are changing. So the second derivative is positive when x is greater than zero for this function I've made up here. And when the second derivative is positive, we say that the original function is concave up. Notice that over that entire interval as well, all of the tangent lines that are drawn are below the function. All the tangent lines are below. Let's now contrast this with when a function is concave down. So a function is what we say concave down over an interval if over that interval the value of the second derivative is less than zero, meaning negative. So it notice this here also tangent line slopes are now decreasing. Remember, a second derivative tells you how the tangent slopes are changing. The first derivative tells you the actual value of the tangent slope. The second derivative tells you how those tangent slopes are changing. So if we look over the interval x less than zero, so from negative infinity to zero, notice that as I move from left to right, so let's start over here on the left side of the function, uh, my tangent slope here is 11.87. As I move to the right and continue drawing the tangent slopes, notice the, the value of the tangent slopes are going down. The tangent slopes are decreasing, which means my second derivative will be negative. And those tangent slopes keep decreasing. They keep going down, 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 right? We're paying attention to the number here. They keep going down until I get to negative four. And then what happens to the tangent slopes? They start going up. So notice that means the function was concave down until this x value right here and now it's concave up. So the second derivative tells us how the tangent slopes are changing. So the tangent slopes were decreasing until here. That means the second derivative was negative until there. And then the second derivative changed to positive because the tangent slopes started increasing. I'll show you a graph of the second derivative just so we can, we can verify what I'm talking about. So here's a graph of the second derivative, f double prime of x. Notice, its y values tell you the concavity of the original function. Before an x value of zero, the second derivative has negative y values. That tells us that the original function is concave down in that interval. After an x value of zero, so an x is greater than zero, the second derivative has positive y values. That tells us that the original function must be concave up over that interval. So keep in mind, the second derivative tells us the rate of change of the tangent slopes. The tangent slopes are decreasing, 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 decreasing until this point, and then the tangent slopes start increasing. <clears throat> so the first derivative tells us how the function itself is increasing and decreasing. Um, the second derivative 
tells us how the tangent slopes are increasing or decreasing, right? Which then tells us whether the function is concave up or concave down. So notice when a function is concave down, the tangent, the tangent lines are all drawn above the function. When a function is concave up, all the tangent lines are drawn below a function. So that's another way you can tell. Okay, let's actually do some work with this. Oh, and I should mention this point right here, this point, 0, 0, on this function, where it switches from being concave down to concave up, right? That's the point where the tangent slopes stop decreasing and then start increasing. We call that a point of inflection. So how can we tell if we have a point of inflection? Well, what we do is we check if the value of the second derivative changed from being positive to negative or vice versa on either side of that x value. And when I showed you the graph of the second derivative, we can see, yes, the second derivative was negative before an x value of 0 and positive after the x value of 0. So that means there was a change in concavity, which means the point 0, 0 was a point of inflection. So that's all that it's showing here. So it's pretty much the same function here, showing that's a, that's a point of inflection because the function changes from concave down before to concave up after. And we can test that by checking the value of the second derivative, see if it changes, uh, see if it changes signs on either side of that x value. So let's go ahead and do, oh, before I do an example, sorry. I just want to make sure you understand the difference between what a first derivative tells you and what a second derivative tells you. So for this function here, same shape function, I'm trying to outline, let's look at this first uh, chart here. In this first chart, I want to make sure you understand what the first derivative tells you. So uh, in this interval here, this red interval, I know the first derivative would be positive, And I know that because the function is increasing, right? The first derivative tells you the tangent slope. So over that interval, I know that uh, the first derivative would be positive because the tangent slopes drawn on that interval would all be positive. Let me go back to here. So before this local max point, if we look at the tangent slopes, they're all positive. They're all positive before that local max point. So that tells me that the original function is increasing. Between this local max and this local min, the function is decreasing. And what would the first derivative be between there? They would all be negative. Notice all those tangent slopes are negative. That tells me, so when the first derivative is negative, that tells me the original function is decreasing. And then after this local min point, it's going, the tangent slopes are going to switch back to positive because the function is now increasing. So that's all this chart is telling you. If the first derivative is positive, that tells you the function is increasing. If the first derivative is negative, it tells you the function is decreasing. Okay, so what does the second derivative tell us? Remember, the second derivative tells us how those tangent slopes are changing. It tells us, are those tangent slopes not are those tangent slopes positive or negative, but are, are those tangent slopes uh, increasing or decreasing? So what, how are those tangent slopes changing? So notice over this interval here, I know the second derivative would be negative because if I were to draw tangent slopes over that interval and move from left to right, I know those tangent slope values would be decreasing. And then at this point, they would stop decreasing and start increasing. So the second derivative would be positive. So let me show you that one more time. Moving from left to right, these tangent slope values right here, how are they changing? Well, they're getting smaller. They're decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. They keep decreasing until this point. They get down to negative 4, and then they start increasing. So this right here is where the second derivative would have a value of 0. Before that x value, the second derivative is negative because the tangent slopes are decreasing. And after that x value of 0, the second derivative is positive because the tangent slopes are increasing. Okay. That's a long enough explanation. I hope you get how the second derivative tells you how the tangent slopes are changing. And the first derivative actually tells you the tangent slope. So if we have this function here, all this question wants you to do is find all the points of inflection and state the intervals of concavity. So when is the function concave up? When is it concave down? So we're going to find all the points of inflection. So at a point of inflection, the value of the second derivative is 0. Right? That's when the tangent slopes stop changing. They were decreasing and then increasing or vice versa. So what we need to do if we want to find the possible points of inflection is we need to find the zeros of the second derivative. So let's find the first derivative for this. So 4x cubed minus 12x. Let's find the second derivative by differentiating the first derivative and we get 12x squared minus 12. And now we need to find the zeros of this. So I can find that by uh, a common factor here. So I've got 12 x squared minus 1. Uh, the x squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, so x minus 1, x plus 1. 
that's fully factored form. How could this be zero? Well, if x minus one was zero, uh, I can make x minus one be zero by making x one, or I can make x plus one be zero by making x negative one. So there are two, what we call, these are, these are possible points of inflection. Possible points of inflection. Uh, well, those are the x coordinates of them anyway. I should also get the y coordinates of them. So I to find the y coordinates, I'll have to figure out what is f at one, what is f at negative one, to see where the function actually is at those x coordinates. So f at one, I've got one minus six minus five, that's negative 10. And f at negative one, well, since this isn't even function, right? Each term is even degree that I know it's symmetrical about the y-axis, so I know it's going to be at the same spot. f at negative 1 is also f at negative 10. Or f at negative 1 is also negative 10. So I have two possible points of inflection. 1, negative 10, and negative 1, negative 10. How do I test if these are actually points of inflection? Well, I have to see if there's a change in concavity around those x values, if it actually switches from being concave up to concave down or vice versa. So I'm going to have to make a chart where I test uh, in each of the following intervals. So the interval between negative infinity and the first possible point of inflection, between the first possible point of inflection and the second possible point of inflection, and then between the second possible point of inflection and infinity. I'm going to figure out what's the value of the second derivative in each of those intervals. And then I'm going to comment on what does that tell me about the original function? So let's fill this chart out. So let's pick a test value, 0, 2. So let's pick a test value for each of these. So if I plug negative 2 into my second derivative, so that would be 12, plug negative 2 in here times negative 3, times negative 1, that'd be 36. It'd be positive. So my second derivative is positive over that interval. How about if x is 0. That's my test point. Plug it into the second derivative. If I plug 0 in for that, I would get 12 times negative 1 times 1. That's negative 12. So I would have a negative second derivative in that interval between negative 1 and 1. And how about from 1 to infinity? My test value I chose is 2. So let's plug 2 into the equation of the second derivative. And I'm choosing factored form. You could do the standard form. It'd be 12 times 1 uh, times 2, right? I'm plugging, what, what am I plugging in here? Actually, no, sorry, I'm plugging 2 in for two in for x, right? So 12 times 1 times 3, and that gives me 36. So I know that it switches back to being concave up there. The second derivative is positive, right? So what does this tell me about the original function? Well, in this interval, I know that the tangent slopes are increasing, right? This tells me the tangent slopes are increasing, which means the function must be concave up. It must be concave up over that interval. Over this interval, between negative 1 and 1, the tangent slopes are decreasing, which means the function must be concave down over that interval. And here, concave up again. So notice there are two switches in concavity. It switches in concavity at this point, at negative 1, negative 10. That's a point of inflection because it switches concavity. And also it switches again at the point 1, negative 10. So I have two points of inflection. And the question also asks us to comment on when is the function concave down, when is the function concave up. So it's concave down over one interval from negative 1 to 1. So negative 1 to 1. And it's concave up when x is less than negative 1 or when x is greater than 1. So when x less than negative 1 or x is greater than 1. Right, we could write this in bracket notation as well, right, from negative infinity to negative 1 or 1 to infinity, and up here we could just write from negative 1 to 1. So I hope you now understand you know, what the second derivative tells us in terms of concavity, and how the zeros of the second derivative reveal to us possible points of inflection. To verify if they are or not, we actually have to do a test to actually check and see if there's a change in concavity around those possible points of inflection. So I hope that helps. Okay, let's just verify the answer we got with our Desmos application here. So we said that the function is concave up when x is less than negative 1, concave down between negative 1 and 1, and then again concave up when x is less than 1. So notice that is true. So this is our function. Notice the tangent slopes themselves. So here I've got Desmos telling me the value of the first derivative, which tells me the tangent slopes. So notice the tangent slopes... Uh, as I move from left to right in the interval x and less than negative 1, those tangent slopes, we pay attention to these values, are going to be increasing. 
And then once we get to this point of inflection we found, right, the tangent slope there is 8, what happens to the tangent slopes between negative 1 and 1? <clears throat> well, it starts at 8, and then it starts going down. They start decreasing, and they decrease, 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 all the way to here when they get to negative 8. And then what happens to the tangent slopes over the interval x is greater than 1? Those tangent slopes, which start at negative 8, start going back up. They start increasing. So remember, when tangent slopes are increasing, we say the function is concave up. Right? The second derivative is positive over that interval. When tangent slopes are decreasing over this interval, the second derivative is negative. We say, it's conca we say the original function is concave down. And then the tangent slopes are increasing, which means the second derivative is positive, which means the original function is concave up. And let's just take a look at the graph of the second derivative to verify this. Notice the second derivative has positive y values uh, for an x is less than negative 1 negative y values for x between negative 1 and 1, and positive y values for when x is bigger than 1, right? So the value of the second derivative being positive here and positive here tells us the original function is concave up over those intervals, and the fact that the y values of the second derivative are negative over this interval, it tells us the original function is concave down over that same interval. By doing all this, we've also verified that these points here and here are points of inflection because there are changes in concavity there concave up to concave down, and then concave down to concave up. And if looking at the graph of the second derivative, we can see, yes, in fact, it does change signs. Um, it changes from, the second derivative changes from positive to negative, and then from negative to positive. So since there's a change in sign of the second derivative around those x values, we know that, the, yes, there is a change in concavity at those points on the original function, which means they are points of inflection. So make sure you go to jensenmath.ca. Um, all the accompanying material is there. You'll notice this example is in one of the lessons. There's practice problems. Uh, yeah, so make sure, uh, like the video, subscribe, and more videos coming soon.